All right, now let's look at setting up our collider simulation, which then in turn will drive our skin simulation. And for that, we'll be creating this grain simulation here, driven by this custom constraints behavior, uh, which causes this nice organic effect. Um, and then we'll transfer this movement onto our skin simulation. So let's look at setting this up now. So I'm going to copy the null patch we made here and I'll be object merging this in here into a new stream on to the, to the left of this existing stream. Uh, I prefer to work in one geometry container for this type of setup. Uh, but if you would rather have split this up into separate geometry containers, then you should do that. So I'll put down an object merge here, paste in the path to our uh, patch null. And here we have our uh, skin patch. Now we'll be want to um, put this onto the origin and flatten it out so we have a nice area for simulating our grains on. Um, and then we'll be simulating these grains, uh, making sure they look and behave the way we want them to. And then when we have the result of this simulation, we'll take that and ray it back onto this original skin patch. So let's flatten this first off. I'm going to do that with a transform node. I'm going to say move centroid to origin. And then let's rotate this 90 degrees in the x axis, on the x axis. And then let's flatten this out on the z axis. And let's also make sure to save out our uh, x form attribute here so that once we're done with our simulation, we can uh, restore our transform here and then have a good starting position to ray these points back onto the skin patch. So next up, we're going to want to, uh, for one, create our simulated grains inside of this area here. And then we're also going to want to have a border around the patch here with non-simulated grains. And they will just act as like a bumper border to keep the other grains from flying off into space. So let's uh, do create the border first. And for that, I'll just be putting down a divide node here and we'll remove every edge here except for our um, our outside edges here. Let's uncheck convex polygons. And here we have our points. Let's switch this back to gray like this for now. Let's put down a ends, unroll this, unroll with shared points. And now we have a single line here around our skin patch. Let's just ghost our skin patch here. And I want some margin on this border. So let's put down another transform um, before the divide and just slightly increase the uniform scale to something like this. Let's resample this. We don't need quite as many points. Maybe a few more than that. Maybe half of that. Something like this looks nice. Maybe a bit bigger still. 1.1. Yeah, that should be good. Let's just give these points some p scale value. Oh. I'm going to call this set p scale border. Let's just say p scale is one. Maybe we'll come back and change this. Let's group this stream, a points group. And we'll just call this grain border. And now let's look at our uh, sim points. So for that, we'll be scattering points onto this surface. I'm going to create a scatter. And we're also going to, uh, on these points, we're also going to want a normal, which we do have actually. All right, that's good. Um, and let's also create a group for these. Let's call this one grain sim. 
and let's just merge these two streams like this. I'm going to switch the uh, inputs here by Shift R, and we have some uh, attributes here that we don't really need. Let's actually take care of just getting rid of these while we're at it. Um, it's gonna put on a attribute delete here and just throw out the UV as well as the rest P which we don't need all right so our um, grain simulation will be driven by sub level P scale changes so we'll be setting up a uh, noise here driving the P scale and then we'll fetch these sub level P scale changes into DOPS and that then uh, drives our simulation. So uh, let's set that up. Uh, on the grain sim here, make sure that the group type is set to points. I accidentally missed that. And on the scatter here, let's decrease our points to maybe a 50 at first while we're tweaking our uh, p scale values. And let's do this with an attribute noise. And um, let's, uh, to preview our values here, let's first change this to a uh, 1D noise. Let's set our attributes to be p-scale. And to uh, get a nice representation of this, let's use the vellum uh, configure grain node here. And it'll give us this uh, sprite previewing mode. Um, but uh, this node creates a p-scale value by default and we don't want that. So let's uh, allow editing of contents of this node, dive in here and on this attribute wrangle set is grain and p-scale. Let's just comment out this uh, p-scale line here. And uh, now we have massive grains here. Let's take care of that by remapping our noise to uh, say a minimum of zero and a maximum of 0 0.01. Um, let's also make sure that this is only affecting our grain sim group. And our borders don't seem to be showing up here. We have our points. And we probably just need to get rid of the primitive here. So let's add an add node here and say delete geometry but keep points and now we have our grain um, grain our border grains back here but they're way too big so let's change the p scale here to 0 0.05 maybe smaller 0 0.01 0 0.015 yeah something like this will do for the border points. Let's just have a look here. The size here. All right. All right. I'm going to uh, increase the, the padding of the border here a bit. Yeah, something like that. It's not super precise. Um, all right, now let's tweak these uh, values here in our attribute noise. Um, so we're definitely going to want an animated noise. So while this place, we have these changes here in the p-scale. Uh, you can choose any noise you want here. I'm going to go with a flow noise, I think. Um, and let's tweak these values now. Um, for now, I'm actually going to cut off the border here and uh, increase the scatter amount to a thousand again, just so we can really see this noise pattern as it's evolving. And we also don't need to have this template on just so we can see what's going on. So um, for one, I think I want this element size. Let's have this playing while we're tweaking this. 
I think I want a quite a small element size here. Maybe small overall noise. Get a lot of changes. Uh, I don't want uh, any roughness here. I want a very smooth noise. Something like that. Let's see, our pulse duration can probably be a bit uh, lower as well. So we get some quite drastic changes here. And we might have to come back and look at this um, as we're uh, simulating our actual sim as well. Something like this perhaps. Let's see how this looks with less points. I'm going to decrease the force total here again to around maybe 15. All right. Let's pull back our border. So I think I'm going to want my uh, maximum p-scale here to be quite a bit bigger. Maybe 0 0.05. And our smallest points should be quite small, but they should never go down to zero. So maybe 0 0.015. And I want the noise to be even smaller. I can still see a lot of changes here in one area. So 0 0.1 element size. That's better. I have a hunch that this might be a bit too quick, but I think we can uh, leave it at this for now. Um, let's look at setting up our, uh, our constraints and anything else needed for the simulation now. All right, so let's get this ready for our simulation now. Uh, first up, I noticed that our point normals that we have here on our grain sim stream, uh, they get deleted once they hit this merge here. And that's because of these uh, vertex normals coming in from the grain border stream. So let's just get rid of those vertex normals. So I'm going to add an attribute delete here to the grain border stream and throw out the normals. And now we have our grain sim board and points normals back. And in addition to that, uh, after the attribute noise and before the vellum constraints node here, let's add in a point relax node. And it's just going to give us a nice initial state for our simulation. And since the relax node uses the normal attribute for its operation here, and the border points don't have a normal, they won't be affected, which is great for us because we don't want any uh, deformation to our border at this stage. So now let's set up our constraints. Uh, so for that, we'll first up, we'll get rid of our border points here. So let's blast the grain border. We don't have to view our normals. And now let's create these polylines between all these grains with the connect adjacent pieces node. And we'll set that to adjacent points mode. And then let's just crank the search radius here until we start getting what we want. And I want there to be quite a few um, constraints, but not too many. This would be a bit too much. I think I'm going to put this at free, like this. Let's see. Yeah, all right. Uh, and in the connect adjacent pieces node, since we'll be manipulating the rest length attribute of these constraints, we want to make sure to create the rest length here. And now let's set up the uh, primitive attributes that we're going to need for these constraints that we'll do in a prim wrangle. I'll call this set constraint attributes. And we're going to need a, a stiffness, a damping ratio, uh, and a, a constraint type. And the stiffness and the damping ratio are going to be quite important for the art direction of this. So for those two, let's create channels. Stiffness. And for damping, it's called damping ratio. And a channel for that too. And for the type, that's going to be a string. And these are going to be distance constraints. 
let's also add in a compression stiffness for good measure like this and the connect adjacent pieces node here might complain about this name thing but it doesn't matter uh, as for our points uh, we'll be simulating we want to make sure that the border is being brought into the simulation but that it's not actually moving then it's just acting as this bumper border so we'll just tell the grain uh, border points that they'll be stopped let's do that with another wrangle wired at it here that'll run over the grain border points and here we'll just say I had stopped is one let's call this set stopped border let's create a dot network our points here in the first input constraints in the second let's call this uh, collider sim and let's look at setting that up so before uh, setting up this top network let's just uh, quickly go over what we're what we'll be doing so uh, we'll be fetching in the p scale changes from the sub level and then we'll be uh, uh, on each constraint we'll be looking at point a and point b that it's connected to and we'll get the p scale values from those two points and then the, uh, based on those p scale values we'll set a new rest length uh, uh, in addition to that we'll also add in some randomness and then this will create this push and pull behavior as these uh, p scale changes occur and that then gives us this uh, sort of organic behavior all right so let's set that up all right now let's set up the dot network the collider sim but before we do this let's make sure that on, on our uh, set constraint attributes wrangle here that we are actually creating these channels which I had forgotten to so uh, let's create these channels they're important let's make sure the stiffness is set to 100 and the damping to 0 0.1 and perhaps we'll have to tweak these after our sim here and now let's get into the dot network and in here we're going to need a vellum solver and we'll want a vellum object and the vellum solver will change the sub steps to eight and the constraint iterations to eight as well and under the advanced tab on the, the grain collisions here we want to make sure to uncheck assume uniform radius our radiuses are not uniform and we'll be changing them and let's set that up now so first up we'll grab the incoming p scale and then we'll uh, look at those p-scale values on the constraints and then we'll set our new rest lengths depending on those values so let's fetch the p-scale first I'll do this with a pop wrangle here call this fetch p-scale uh, let's just run this on the oh, I have to connect this let's run this on the grain sim group and in the inputs here let's change input 2 to first context geometry so that we're able to fetch the p scale changes coming in here uh, all right and let's just say p scale is equal to point one p scale and match it with the pt num and now let's uh, do this uh, constraints um, rest length change and for that we'll need a geometry wrangle uh, this one will run over primitives of course in the data bindings tab here we have to change our geometry code to constraint geometry and our inputs will run this over ourselves and for input 2 we want to fetch the dot data of the geometry so that we can get the p scale so we'll say obj id slash geometry all right so in here now for each constraint let's look at uh, 
0 and 0 0.1 for each constraint. Let's write those point numbers to an array. And with that information, then we can fetch the p-scale. And then we'll use that p-scale to set a new random rest length, or semi-random. We'll get to that. So let's create the array here. I'm going to call this pts and use the print points function to get those points on each uh, constraint, like this. Now let's grab the p-scale. I'm going to call the first one p-scale 0. And let's grab that with the point function, p-scale, and pts. And let's get the first hit of the array. Let's just copy this line, paste it in. Let's call this one p-scale 1. And here, just grab the second point, uh, hit of the array. And that'll be all the points, because each constraint line just has two points. Now let's um, create our new rest length. Let's write in a variable first. I'm going to call this new rl for rest length. And that'll be equal to our p-scale 0 uh, plus p-scale 1. And then let's also uh, add some sort of randomness in here. Um, so I'm going to create a random number and multiply that with this result. And let's also fit this random number to something. So fit, I'm going to use fit01 here because I'm using the random function. And I know that the outcome is between 0 and 1. And let's base this random number on, say, let's use the primnum. And uh, that's going to be static. So let's also add in something here that changes sometimes. So let's create a uh, number for that. So we're going to use the ceiling function here for that. So I'll just use the frame number and divide that by, uh, by the amount uh, where we want this to change. So I'm going to say uh, divide this by 48. So every two uh, seconds, we'll get a new uh, multiplier here for the random rest length like this. And then let's just write this out to our rest length like this. And I missed something here. I need one more of these guys. Oh, of course, uh, we never actually, uh, or I rather, I never actually uh, gave it a new value here. So let's say that uh, this multiplier should go from about somewhere between 1 to 2.5, like this. Let's call this wrangle set new rest length. And in addition to this, let's also add in a pop drag here. I would like uh, these grains to lose quite a bit of their energy as they do their thing. And finally, let's add in another pop wrangle and here we just want to make sure that for each uh, sub-step we're always setting the y position of these grains to zero, just to avoid any strangeness. In Houdini 18, I know this, uh, these grains have a tendency to fly off into space, so we don't want that. So let's call this one set y to zero. All right, let's jump up a level. Let's uh, have this cache out in the play bar just, and let's see what we got. All right, so here we got our um, simulation cached out here on the play bar, and uh, it seems to be working well. In addition, I've also added a dop import here just to grab our uh, constraints and to see that our rest length values are updating properly. And here, every 48 frames, we should have a, a more dramatic shift happening. Um, so that's all working. And uh, the only thing that I think we have to tweak here is that it's a bit too fast, or actually quite a lot too fast. I kind of suspected this by our, uh, because of our pulse duration in our p-scale noise here being quite low. So let's have a look at that. So I'm gonna uh, view my grains here, uh, temporarily disable this relax. And then let's just look at our attrib noise here. Let's play this. And it's quite fast. Let's increase this to, I'm going to almost triple this, put this at a solid one. 
um, we're really here at this stage. I mean, I urge you to uh, try out your own thing. Maybe try different noises, or um, for example, you can have a, a much larger element size. Uh, might create a pretty interesting result. I'm going to stick to these values that I know work quite well. Let's re-enable this relax node. And uh, before we let this cache out again, let's uh, set up our uh, importing nodes here. So I'm going to throw out this stop import here for the that I had for the constraints. And I'm going to put down a fresh one. Drag in our dot network here. Change the import style to fetch geometry from dot network. And uh, uh, that should be it for that. And now let's get rid of our border. We don't want those points. Let's delete those, of course. And let's also get rid of all the attributes, all these attributes that the top network set up for us. And let's also get rid of the groups. We don't need them anymore. And we'll only keep our normal and our p scale. Let's do that. Let's make sure to uncheck remove degenerate primitives and remove unused points, or it'll delete our, all, all our points for us. And then let's just keep the p scale and the normal. Let's put down a file cache. I have this set up to the job geo, and then the file cache node name, the node name again, the frame, and then I'm storing these as BGOs, of course. Uh, let's call this node colliders uh, version one. And at this point, it might also be a good idea to increase our uh, total frame amount here. Uh, since these will be driving our skin simulation later on and the skin simulation will be driving our hair simulation There's quite a lot going on and we want these to fade in do their thing We want to be able to see our all our simulation results and then perhaps also fade out uh, So we're gonna need a bit of time for that. So I'm gonna double this to 480 And then let's uh, cash this out So here's our new simulation playing out uh, I've just templated the dot network here so we get this uh, sprite preview. I think this is looking pretty good. I think this is uh, definitely good enough for us to continue with. And uh, perhaps once we've set up our skin simulation and our hair simulation as well, we can uh, have a final pass and uh, tweak anything we've noticed during, during those simulations. But for now, let's continue with this. So what we want to do now is to uh, take this simulation and uh, restore the transform that we had in our original skin patch and array this uh, simulated result back onto the skin patch. And then we'll uh, uh, fade in and out our p-scale so we have a nice transition for our skin simulation. And then we'll also look at creating some uh, simple geometry for our uh, colliders here so we don't just have these, uh, these uh, spheres. All right, so let's get going with that. So I'm going to grab our uh, transform up here, the one that has the X form attributes. And in a wrangle, let's uh, wire up our file cache result here. We'll call this restore X form. And uh, I'll fetch this transform node here in as a spare input. So I'll add a spare input up here, add spare input and just fetch in this transform here. And then let's just say, before we do this actually, let's grab our skin patch object merge here and just paste this in down here as well. Let's template that. And now that we have these tiny points, let's perhaps change our background to dark. Let's change our geometry on our uh, for our point size here to 10, like this. And now let's restore our X form. So let's say matrix my X form is going to be detail, and we'll use minus one to grab it from the spare input, and it's called X form. And to apply this uh, onto our position and to uh, restore our position, we're going to have to invert this. So I'm going to say my X form is equal to invert my X form. And then to apply this, we simply uh, multiply this for our position, my X form, my X form, not from. 
And now we have our points back here playing out in this space. Uh, our normals are still are pointing up now, so we'll have to take care of that. We can use them for the ray and also to push these points out a bit. Um, and here, let's say normal, and let's use our X form again, but let's cast this to a matrix free. Uh, so we'll get rid of the translation component. My X form like this, and then let's also normalize those normals. And they should be back like this. And now uh, let's move these points out a bit and then let's ray them back onto the surface. So let's actually put down the ray here first. So these are the ray points, this is the collision. Let's disable the guide geometry and just keep this templated instead so we don't get this horrible blue guide thing. Normal is correct, but we're going to have to reverse our race. And some of our points are missing now because they're uh, up here, they're already behind. So let's, let's push all these points out a bit. Let's add in another wrangle for that. Let's just call this push. And I'll say position is, time, uh, is equal to the normal times a little channel. Let's call this channel push. And let's push these normal or these points rather like this until they hit our surface. Let's play this and we'll still have some of them probably jumping off here because uh, this is not quite precise uh, this method. Um, I still find this uh, 2D approach of of simulating this, uh, these colliders quite nice and it's quite art directable. We can we can add uh, transform nodes here at this stage to fit this. We could bend this a bit to fit our shape better. Um, and uh, I'm really not concerned about these points uh, intersecting each other or anything. All I'm after when I'm creating this 2D uh, grain simulation is really just this nice erratic organic behavior that the grains get uh, by doing it this way. So uh, we have a point here flying off and we want to want that. So maybe let's just shrink these ever so slightly. Looks like that already helped quite a lot. That's looking pretty good. All right. Next up, let's uh, Look at these p scale operations. So let's take care of uh, the p scale now. So, first up, let's just add in a copy to points here and just copy some geometry on here. Just the sphere. Change this to polygons. Oh, turn off my normals. Let's increase the frequency here to 8 maybe. Uh, and one thing here is that we're still using these uh, these normals here, uh, which is not ideal. So instead, let's uh, fetch the normals we have here on our surface. So I'm going to say import attributes from hits, set that to normal. And uh, of course, we also have to make sure that this stream actually has point normals. So let's create that. like this and this just gives us much better normals when we copy our uh, geometry on here and uh, for a stable orientation here we're also going to want a up vector so let's create that after the ray let's call this setup it's just going to point up in y like so All right, let's just let's give these a uh, well, color based on the bounding box here and just let, let's just play this and then disable the up and you'll see we get them doing strange stuff that we don't want. 
there's been there rotating around here. So let's make sure we have our up here and our copy to points will work much better. And now let's take care of our P scale. Let's do that with another wrangle. And let's call this one fade P scale. So for this, we'll be creating, uh, for each point, we'll be creating a start frame, meaning uh, a frame where they start growing, and uh, as well as an end frame, meaning the frame where they will be um, at zero again. Uh, so we have them fading in and then fading out again. Um, so let's do that. Let's create a start frame. And I'm just going to base this on a uh, on a random number again, based on the PT num. And we're going to fit that random number again. Uh, PT num. And let's have these. Uh, so the earliest frame they can start growing will be frame, say, five. And the latest any of them can start growing will be frame forty. And the same principle for the end frame, fit a one rand pt num. Here I'll just add in a random number just so we don't have the exact same seed. And the uh, earliest they can be back at zero will be, hmm, let's say uh, frame 300, or maybe that's a bit high, 260. And uh, the max frame will be 340, like so. And now we'll take our um, frame number and uh, just fit this uh, to a value between 0 and 1. We'll also create a ramp then, and then we can nicely ramp this uh, on these, uh, with these values. So let's create a range that's going to be based on our frame number, our current frame. And our, uh, our incoming minimum is going to be our start frame, incoming maximum. Our end frame, and out of this, we'll spit out one or zero and one. So now we can take this and use it to uh, drive our p scale. So let's say p scale, fit that as well. well. We're going to be creating a ramp here, and I know I'm going to be wanting to fit the output of the ramp. So the ramp will uh, expect values between zero and one. And we'll also output values between 0 and 1. And then we'll fit these values uh, to our desired minimum p scale and our maximum p scale. And our maximum p scale is just going to be this actual simulation p scale that these points have. Uh, and this attribute we also cached out here. And the minimum p scale is going to be 0. So we have these starting out from 0, growing into uh, this simulated p scale and then uh, fading out uh, fading out again. So let's do this now. Ramp, let's call that p-scale. And we're going to be uh, basing this ramp on this range that we created. And our minimum p-scale, as we said, zero. Our maximum, the actual p-scale incoming. Like so, our grains will disappear. Let's create our ramp. Let's just see what happens. We got them growing in. And now they will grow all the way until they hit their end frame. We can have a look here. Let's hide all these attributes. Oh, I didn't write out the end frame, start frame as attributes. Let's just do that. I'm gonna call this SF, start frame, EF, end frame. So they got these values. So let's have a look at a specific point here. Point zero. So this one will be, ah, viewport has bugged out a bit. All right. So this point will start growing at uh, frame 19, and then it'll reach its full size at frame 327 or 28 could round these numbers as well, but let's not bother. 
Uh, and now we'll just change this ramp here. So we'll have our peak here in the middle somewhere instead, and then we'll have them tapering out again, like so. And I'm going to change all my, uh, my handles here. Just hold shift and click here, select all of them. And I'm going to change the interpolation to uh, monotone cubic. And let's see how that looks. And we got our uh, points showing up here again. All right, they're gone again. Let's play this. And our points start showing up. Very interesting bug. Let me just uh, create a new scene view. Set that to dark again. And let's hope for the best. All right. So now we got them fading in here, reaching their peak here, somewhere around here, and then starting to fade out again. And this fading might be a bit extreme now, so let's add in another point here. And let's just give these some more uh, time where they are at their maximum. All right, something like this. I pushed in this uh, point here just to make sure that the start is really at zero. Um, if for some reason they wouldn't start at, uh, if they would start at something a little bit more than zero, uh, the Vellum uh, skin simulation later might be quite angry about that. So just a fail safe. All right, I think that's for our colliders. Or let's actually have a look at uh, just setting up some simple geometry for these uh, colliders. And then we'll move on to the Vellum skin simulation. All right, so we won't be doing anything uh, fancy for this geometry, really. I just want to create a bit of a, a peak here on these spheres. So I'm going to um, I'm going to group the top of the spheres and then just uh, with a soft transform pull these out a bit. Um, so let's do that. Let's create a group node. Let's put this into points mode. And let's just say, let's have a look here at the sphere. And I got my, I want to have these points selected, please. Okay. Uh, let's just group anything here where the set, because I copied along set, is uh, more than zero. We should have a group. Yes, it's not showing up. Okay, now. And now let's just take this group and soft transform it a bit. So again, a soft transform. Oh, let's actually, let's name this group Sculpt. Say Sculpt here as well. And now let's just increase here the scale and set a bit. something like this, these little egg shapes. Um, all right, I don't want to see this. So now we got these egg shapes instead. Let's have a look at our skin patch as well. See how these are growing in. We might want to Push these back, oh, push these back into the skin a bit. Another fail safe for the um, skin simulation. We don't want these. To, we want these to start under the skin, so to say, so that they have time to push out. So they're not starting uh, by starting out by already intersecting the skin. Uh, that's not gonna be uh, very nice. So let's do that in the ray here, in the lift. Let's just increase that a tiny amount. We really don't have to. Maybe like this. Just making sure we don't have any issues here. All right. Let's add a null down here. Let's say out colliders. Let's color this one black. And uh, that's it for our colliders. Now we'll set up our vellum 
constraints for our skin and then we'll set up our vellum simulation bring these colliders in and see what we can do with them